Hi, welcome to MJT Law. My name is Melanie Thorley and today we're going to talk about how to recover unpaid entitlements through the Federal Circuit Court Small Claims Fair Work Division. It's a bit of a mouthful and it's going to take a little bit of time so, you know, get, dig in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump onto Google and we're going to put in the Federal Circuit Court. Oh, looks like it's already there. Hip hip hooray. And we're going to jump into the website and you'll see it's a really big website so I'm just going to show you how to um, navigate around it. We're going to go to forms and fees. Then we're going to scroll down to uh, industrial law. Okay so it's probably hard to know this just because but we are trying to file an application, Fair Work Division, and we're also going to file a small claim under the Fair Work Act. Okay, so we're going to download both those forms. First one is the application, and here it is here, and we're going to download it in Word version. Here it is here. And the next one we're going to download, I'm just going to go back because it's just easier that way, Industrial Law, and we're going to do the Form 5 small claim. And we're going to download the document version again. I'm going to make this a bit simple for myself and call it small claim. So we know it's two different documents. Okay, so if we just jump into that application. Oh, Word has a start up. Here we go. Enable editing. And we're just going to make it. I don't know why it does that, but we're going to make it super big and we're just going to do this. Well, okay, but big. Okay. Okay, so this will tell you that you, if you're filing a small claim, it is a claim that must be $20,000 or less. Okay, so if it's $20,001, you're going to get kicked out of this jurisdiction. So keep it under 20 grand. There is also a filing fee uh, step. Um, price. So anything 10,000 or less costs I think around 190 bucks. Uh, if it's more than $10,000 then it's double that. Okay, uh, kind of making these numbers up but it's not more than sort of 380 I think for the um, uh, for the one that's 10,000 to, to, to $20,000. Okay, so we're just going to scroll and it just says remove these instructions before filing. Okay, so we're just going to zip up and we're going to delete the whole thing. Oh my goodness, okay, we're going to turn off track changes. <laughs> we're going to do this again. Voila. Okay, so here's the form here. So the registry, look, it all depends on where you are. I'm in Queensland and I'm in Brisbane, so I'm going to put the Brisbane registry. Okay, if you're in New South Wales, you might put the Sydney registry. If you're in Byron Bay, there'll be a registry near you. If you're up north, then there's a registry somewhere close to you. To find the registries, just jump onto the Federal Circuit Court website and find your closest registry that way. But for me, I'm just going to put um, uh, Brisbane. It says small claims list. We absolutely want that, so we're not going to delete that. Now the applicant, that's me, so I'm going to put my name in there. I'm going to spell my name right. Okay, put my name in there and then uh, we're going to use the respondent. Now in this case, the person that's not paying you is your employer. So it's your employer that is the respondent here. Now we're going to recommend that you jump onto your payslip and you're going to see a name and an ABN on that payslip. So you're going to use that. Um, so for now, we're just going to make something up, okay? So it's going to be uh, bad firm, PTY, LTD. And we're going to put the ABN or ACN as, I don't know, 23658586 oh, and then there's another three digits and we're just going to have 123. So that's going to be the respondent. Now it says repeat if you've got additional parties but you probably only have one employer that's underpaying you so we're just going to put that in. Now it's application fair work division and now this is actually really important because it puts you in the right uh, kind of pile when it gets to the courts. So we're going to put it under the Fair Work Act. I'm going to try to. Okay, let's check. So we're going to do it under the Fair Work Act because that is the act with which you're going to be um, uh, claiming the underpayment under. And we're going to be dealing with a small claim. So we're going to say yes. Now the advantage of a small claim is it's a 
no cost, no lawyer jurisdiction, which means as long as you don't do something appalling, like start an application you absolutely know has no merit, you are not going to have, or more likely than not, going to have a cost application against you if you lose. So there's very little risk if you have a genuine claim uh, for underpayments. And a no lawyer jurisdiction just makes it super cheaper for you. So it means the other side don't have a right um, to have a lawyer, they must have, get leave to have a lawyer from the courts. Um, and the whole thing is done in a much more sort of uh, uh, informal way. Yep, the registrar who's overseen this has a few more powers to ask for information and to delve into the situation a little bit more. And it just gives uh, you a chance to argue your point without needing that lawyer around. So we are gonna say small claims. Okay, we're gonna leave the first court date because that's actually up to the courts to make the decision on that one. And they're gonna do their own signature here and their date here. Now, you're not gonna fill in this part of the form because this is when you file on behalf of. So we're a firm, we're a law firm. So we would be, if we were acting for someone, this is where we would put our details in. So you're just gonna leave that out altogether because they're gonna know who you are by the next part of the form. Okay, so the final order sort, we're just gonna tick order sort as set out in the claim. If I can tick that, yes I can. Because remember the other document that we downloaded was the uh, form five. And grounds for the application, that's gonna be set out in the claim as well. So we're just gonna check that. We're not gonna have any interim orders set down. You're gonna sign it, you're gonna call yourself the applicant and you're gonna date it on the date that you signed it. So that form, uh, and then you put the respondent's name and their address in there, in this part here. And once you've done that, that form is done. We go and now move to the next form. So the next form is the actual small claim itself. Okay, it's coming up, right. We're gonna make it a bit bigger and we're gonna put enable editing. Hmm, that didn't work either. Why it's not working? One of, you, one of you guys can write in and tell me why that doesn't work. Okay, so this is gonna mirror your uh, other application. So we're just gonna bring it up. Here it is here. And it's gonna have Brisbane, it's gonna have Melanie Thorley, and it's gonna have Bad Firm, PTY, LT, Fit D. So I'm just gonna actually, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm just gonna copy and paste. Or not as the case may be. Okay, guys, I need to get this. One moment. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna do some copying and pasting. So I'm just gonna put Brisbane in there, and I'm gonna put the applicant, actually I might just do it this way. I'm just gonna copy both of those, and I'm gonna bring in this whole bit here. Oh, I can't do that. Ugh, okay, we can't do that. Can we? Okay, I'm just going to pick up the whole thing. It's going to be so much easier. Okay, neural. Okay. So here we got the form. This is the form five, and these details are the same as the details in the other documents. What I might do is I might just make it a little bit smaller, and we're going to put them side by side. Hopefully, uh, that's not going to be too difficult for you when you're looking at it through YouTube. Okay, so we're just going to do this, we're gonna pull it across here and we're just gonna bring it down and we're just gonna make it so you can actually see the page. Okay, so I don't know, everyone get their magnifying glasses out. It's just gonna be a little bit easier to show you how it's the same, that's all. So here, we're just gonna put Brisbane. And here, I'm just gonna put the applicant. And here, we're going to put the respondent, PTY, LTD, ABN. Now, some will say you must put the ACN in, and some will say it doesn't really matter. Um, if you've got a problem, if, it, if you get to a, if this becomes a problem, then you just deal with it at the court. But it shouldn't make a difference whether you put the ABN or ACN in. 
I'm sure there'll be a legal practitioner out there that is screaming at me saying that's absolutely the wrong thing to do, but we've never had a problem. Okay, so this is your Form 5, and it, now at this part of here, it looks exactly like your application, but this is where it diverges. Yeah, it's completely different from here on. So we're just going to make this small. We're going to make this big. Okay, so we're going to put your name in. So my name is Mrs. Oh, Thorley, given names. Melanie. Yep, my address, well, we can say it's, what's the address here? It's uh, 215 Wharf Street. And we're going to say Spring Hill, because that's where we are. Queensland, and the postcode is 4000. Okay, business phone number. You, I'm just going to put the mobile number in there. Actually, I'll put my business number in here. 07 Well, this form could do with some um, editing, couldn't it? Date of birth. Hmm, I'm going to leave that blank, but you should put your date of birth in there. First language is English. Okay, this is your employer's details. Okay, remember what we're doing is we're getting this off your payslip. So you're going to put the employer's name and so on and so forth. So it was bad guy, PTY, LTD. The address is, we're going to make it one, I don't know, right street. And we're going to make that in Spring Hill again. You live really close to work. And the postcode, we know it's 4000. Okay, your phone number, we're going to just make a phone number up 07 uh, 45, 4356 4567. Aha. If that's somebody's phone number, I apologise. If the applicant is an individual, details of representation. Okay, so an organisation such as a union acting on your behalf, we're going to say no, and we're going to go to number 15. So that's just going to kneel. Here we go. This is asking for your representative details. One would assume if you've got a representative acting for you, they're going to be filling in this form, so you're not going to have to worry about it. But right now, we're going to talk about you. Notice this is where you want it to go to court. We're going to say address in two. If you just we scroll up to number two, it'll say your address in there, and that's the address that we want to use. So we're just going to go address in number two. And the details of work performed by you. What's your occupation? We're going to say that you are a office worker. And you perform, what work or services do you perform? You are a data entry. Oh, you spell that right. Data entry operator, okay? So your duties are entering data from one computer to another. You probably have a different job to this, but obviously you explain what your duties are. Now, this is a classification. And so I know that a data entry operator is a clerk, um, is the general clerk's award, and it's a level one. One, and I'm going to put, yeah, clerk's award. Place of worker services, it's going to be probably the same place as your business, but if you're in somewhere different, then pop those details in there. And when you started and when you finished, yeah. Um, that could be that you are um, an ongoing employee, or it could be that you are terminated. So you would put some information in there. Um, if the employee's employment or outworker's contract was terminated, then say yes. And you, uh, most people receive uh, notification in writing that their employment's been terminated. If you haven't, then you need to make a note here that you haven't been notified in writing that you're terminated. Uh, otherwise, you just add that notice of termination. It could be a text message, it could be an email, it could be a letter, okay? But it should be in writing. Okay, details of work performed by the employee. Well, I'm going to be a full-time employee and I'm going to work regular hours. My hours are going to be uh, 8, 30 to 5 o'clock. Yeah, we just put those in. I know this is probably a quicker way to do this, guys, but this is, this is it. 8, 30 to 5. I've probably put 5 p.m., right? Because that makes more sense. 
Okay. All right, so I'm a full-time worker, so I'm going to go all the way down to Monday, um, all the way down to Friday. But you should put what you think, um, what you are working, yeah, in here. I'm just going to do to Wednesday because actually this is taking too long. Okay, so next part. Contravention alleged. Now, you have been underpaid. So, well, that's what we're claiming that you've been. Yep, you've been underpaid. And you've been underpaid by $9,000. And this is a um, uh, underpayment based on the modern award. Yep, you should have been receiving $21.13 or something an hour. And in fact, you've been receiving $19 an hour. So you've been underpaid. So we're going to say it's a term of modern award and it's the general clerk's award. Yep, so that's what we're putting in there. But it could be that you haven't been paid your payment of notice. That's a national employment standard. Okay, so you just got to determine what that is. If you're having troubles with this part, give us a call. We can provide you some very brief advice on this and how to kind of complete this part of it. But you should be able to determine what type of pay you're not getting. And there's a few of them in here. Yeah, enterprise agreement, workplace determination, national minimum wage order, safety net contractual entitlement. So you just pop what you what you've got in there. So it's going to be wages. And it's going to be how much? So I've been underpaid $9,000. Yep. And I've also got annual leave of $80 been underpaid. I'm just making this stuff up. So now it's $9,080. Okay. And whom should be paid? Well, we're going to put you. Uh, yep. You're going to put your own name in there. I'm just making sure I put my name at the top. Yep. Okay, so it's going to be you that you want to be paid, right? Or you can put the, instead of putting your name in there. Oh, sorry. You can always put applicant. Yep, to make things a bit simpler. The next part of the form is details of this claim. So this is where you show them that you've identified that you haven't been paid correctly. So you would say... You know, on this date, you'd make it into paragraphs. So it might be easier if you just see, put C attached, marked, MT01. Yeah, that's probably one of the easiest ways of doing this. And what we're going to do is we're going to open a new page. We're going to call it MT01. And we're going to put it in number paragraphs. Now, it is a good idea to make this as simple but as clear as you possibly can. And we like making number paragraphs because you can at least identify the line with which you're arguing if you're asked about it. So you would just tell a story here. Yep. On the 1st of January 2017, I commenced working at blah, blah, blah and was told that I was going to be paid $20 per hour. Um, it was not until the 30 of September 2020 when I noticed that the award rate was something which is 9,000 less than, which was not 9,000, of course it's not going to be 9,000, which is, I don't know, it might be 56 cents less than minimum wage. Okay, so you're going to tell a story about why you think you were underpaid. It could be that you've spoken to the Fair Works Ombudsman and they've given you some help there on how to calculate that, but you're telling the story to make it very clear. If you've got anything in any documents to back it up, you can put it in this, this document, but it's not requiring it. Okay, so we've done that document. Now we go back to our form. See attached mark one. And then it's the end. So you put your name, Melanie Thorley. You put your signature in this part here, you say you're the applicant, and you put the date in. Okay, so now we're saving all these documents. You've got your application and you've got your Form 5. How do you file it? Okay, so the way we file this is through e-lodgement. 
So we're going to go into e-lodgement. Federal Court. Looks like it's already found it for me. Happy days. Okay, he's always giving me a lot of information on e-lodgement. Um, so if you don't have an online presence for e-lodgement, you have to create one. So you go to register now and you would go through the process of registering for e-lodgement. I'm just going to put in our e-lodgement details so you can see kind of the start of this. Okay, so we have to go into e-lodgement. And I'm just going to bring this across because this is what it looks like. So you're going to have to log in and go through the login process. You may, like I said, you may already have a uh, login presence because you may have been in the federal courts in the past. But we're just going to, so you, you're now inside eLodgement. We're going to create a new file and we're going to say accept. And it's going to be a federal circuit court file and we're going to file in the Brisbane registry. Okay, and we're going to select an action and it's going to be an in fair work action and it's going to be the type. So this is a small claim. Okay, primary act and it's going to be the fair work act and the source is going to be, where is it? I'm just trying to find the right one. I'm going to have to say Federal Court. Ah, here we go. Federal Circuit Court of Australia. Happy days, and we're going to continue. Right, so this is, as you can see here, it's a small claim, fair work action uh, in the Federal Circuit Court. So we're going to put an application filed with a Form 5 and it's just you just continue okay so this is where you just start you file the applications you put them the person's names in you do all the things you're going to do you upload the file and you just press you keep pressing save until you can press save no longer um, if you're having problems uh, with filing and you just don't understand what you should be doing or where you should be going inside the uh, e-lodgement it is you just call them up and you talk to them and they'll talk you through how to uh, how to file and how to lodge. Now, once you've actually completed and, and uh, um, filed your Form 5 and your application, the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to receive notification from the, Fair, um, from the Federal Circuit Court that your application has been stamped. So you just go back into that e-lodgement and you, you collect your stamped version. And where you do that, I won't show you exactly because it'll be stuff of ours up there, but it'll be up to, you go into lodgement history and you'd collect it from there. And you've downloaded the stamp version, now you have to serve it. To serve it, we always use process servers. These are people whose job it is to serve because the next thing the process server does once they've served the application and the form five is that they send you a, um, uh, an affidavit of service, which you also have to file through the same process. Yeah, so it's really important that you get that right. Uh, it'll probably cost somewhere in the range of about $120, $130 to file um, through a process server. But obviously, if you do it yourself, there is no cost involved, but you will have to go through that affidavit process. Uh, okay, so you, you've, you've got your stamp version, you've given it to a process server, you've downloaded it, you've printed it, you've printed the right number of copies, you've sent it to a process server and they know how to serve it. They've served it and they've sent you an affidavit of service, which you have filed also. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to get your first court date. It's normally in front of a registrar and it'll just be how the matter gets processed going forward, how it's going to get case managed. So you would you'd turn up to court, you would say who you are, if they bring in a solicitor then you can ask for that solicitor to be removed because it's a no solicitor jurisdiction and they'd have to make representations as to why that solicitor should be around. Uh, and then the registrar will case manager will say on this date you need to file this, on this date you need to file that, you need to provide affidavit evidence, you need to give your story, you need to tell what you're going to do. And then they'll tell the respondent they need to do the same thing and then if you have to respond to anything that they've said it'll also, the registrar will also give you a date to do that. And then the next thing that happens after that is it'll be set down for mediation conciliation. 
and that is done through Lawrite and Lawrite will contact you about a date for that conciliation and then you just turn up and you do the conciliation. Hopefully the matter is going to be resolved at that early stage. If it is not to your liking, there's no offer or the offer is not great or you're just not interested in that particular offer, then you don't have to agree to it. Um, that'll be the end of law rights uh, uh, job and it goes back to the courts. The court will then set, set the matter down for a hearing at some point and you will be able to present all your evidence, tell your story, ask the other side questions if, the, uh, if you can and then the registrar will make a decision on to, as to whether you are owed all that money or some of that money or all of that money. Yeah? And that is the end of the matter. Once the court has given an order that the money must be paid, generally the other side pay it. If they don't pay, then that's a completely different situation uh, and you would have to probably seek a little bit of more advice as to what to do next. But that is a go to woe, how to recover unpaid entitlements through the Federal Circuit Court Small Claims Division. If you've got any questions going through that process, give us a call. We should be able to do some sort of consult with you um, and we'll give you some ideas of what, what it would cost if we're going to help you. It can be a bit of an overwhelming process, but stick to um, stick, stick to the app, um, to the documents, stick to your story uh, and hopefully at conciliation you will uh, get a resolution. Thanks for watching.